Okay, well, that was fun and frustrating. Trying to figure out, I don't know what Facebook did to update the video, but I could not figure out how to start a video today. So, anyway, now that I'm frustrated, we let our feelings go. We, we um, <sighs> identify it, frustrated, experience, let it pass. I'm not my feelings, I'm not my thoughts. So, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4. By the way, feel free to make any comments or leave any questions you may have in the comment box. I mean, obviously the comment part is self-explanatory, but if you have questions, whatever, just type them away in the comment box and we'll see what happens. Okay, so chapter 4. Um, which I believe in the original text is Jnana Yoga, which is wisdom, the yoga of wisdom. Here, uh, the title is Wisdom in Action for this translation. And so it begins with Krishna. And I'm going to warn you, it's going to say some names. It's going to go through a list of names from Indian mythology. So just bear with that for, for the beginning. All right. <clears throat> Krishna, I told this secret to Vivasat. Vivasat taught Manu, and Manu taught Ikshvaku. Ix Ikshvaku. Thus, Arjuna, eminent sages received knowledge of yoga in a continuous tradition, but through time the practice of yoga was lost in the world. The secret of these teachings is profound. I have explained them to you today because you were my friend and devotee. So I'm going to read verse 2 again. He says, Thus Arjuna, eminent sages received knowledge of yoga in a continuous tradition. But through time, the practice of yoga was lost to the world. Remember, yoga is this union with God, the pra or union with whatever you want to be united to. To me, it means union with God. Um, and so union with God has always been taught as... Um, Ever since there were people, it's been taught, and it keeps getting forgotten. So whenever it's forgotten, someone has to come along and reteach it. Buddha said the same thing, that every whenever the Dharma is forgotten, a Buddha must arise to remind people of the Dharma. Uh, make the case that Christ was doing the same thing with Judaism and Christianity and so on. And so whenever the way of divine knowledge is sort of forgotten and people aren't living up to it, God sends a messenger to remind people. In this case, it's Krishna. Feel free to think of Krishna whatever you want. The secrets of these teachings is profound. I have explained them to you today because you were my friend and devotee. Arjuna says, You were born much after Vivasat. He lived very long ago. Why do you say that you taught this yoga in the beginning? Krishna responds, You and I have passed through many births, Arjuna. You have forgotten, but I remember them all. My true being is unborn and chainless. That chainless, which I guess works. But what he actually says is, My true being is unborn and changeless. I am the Lord who dwells in every creature. Through the power of my own Maya, I manifest myself in in." Through the power of my own maya, I manifest myself in a finite form. Whenever dharma declines and the purpose of life is forgotten, I manifest myself on earth. I am born in every age to protect the good, to destroy evil, and to reestablish dharma. I'm just going to stop. I don't like doing a lot of commentary, but some words you may not be familiar with. Maya is uh, for just to make it really, really, really simple, uh, is sort of like illusion. It's the whole world that we see, uh, the world we experience, the world of senses and sense objects is illusory. It's an illusion. Uh, even though it's real, it's also an illusion because we're chasing after illusory things like sense objects are illusory. We're looking for pain. We're looking for pleasure and seeking to avoid pain and it creates a delusional, illusionary world that we live in. So it's sort of built into the fabric. Um, so Maya is just sort of this sort of illusion of 
duality and multiplicity when there's only oneness. And uh, so the, through the power of my own Maya, I manifest myself in a finite form. So Krishna is saying as speaking as the divine being that he sort of stitches himself together from this illusion to create a finite form for him to sort of deposit his Godhead in, which is in this case is Krishna or in the Christian sense could be Christ or the Buddha sense could be Buddha. So basically Krishna says, I taught these these teachings in the very beginning. They've been forgotten. And whenever they're forgotten, you know, or I taught these things from the beginning. I taught them to these people from long ago. Uh, it's, it's deep stuff, Arjuna. It's deep stuff. And Arjuna says, wait a minute, Krishna. You're like my age. How can you say you taught these people long ago? So it'd be like Krishna saying, hey, I taught Adam. I taught, uh, I taught Noah. Uh, and I taught King David these things. And then, you know, him saying it to me and me go, whoa, wait a minute there, cowboy. You're like, you're, you're 50 years old. How can you tell me that you were teaching this stuff to Adam and Noah and say, say Moses? Uh, and Krishna says, hey, I've lived many lives. So have you. We've lived many lives, but you've forgotten. But I remember them all. Krishna says, my true being is unborn and changeless. I am the Lord who dwells in every creature. That would be Brahma, by the way. So he's saying he's Brahma. Brahma is the existence itself. I am the, I am the Lord who dwells in every creature. Through the power of my own Maya, this illusion of sort of material universe stuff, I manifest myself in a finite form. Whenever Dharma... The correct teaching, the correct way of being, the correct way of knowing, sort of like your purpose. Uh, whenever Dharma declines and the purpose of life is forgotten, I manifest myself on earth. I am born in every age to protect the good, to destroy evil, and to reestablish Dharma. I taught these long ago. What do you mean you taught these long ago? You're my age. It's because I've been living many lives, Arjuna, and so have you, and here you go. So that's all that. Whenever people forget, I, 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 I'm reborn and remind them. Krishna continues, Those who know me as their own divine self break through the belief that they are the body and are not reborn as separate creatures. Such a one, Arjuna, is united with me, delivered from selfish attachment Fear and anger filled with me, surrendering themselves to me, purified in the fire of my being, many have reached the state of unity in me. As they approach me, so I receive them. All paths, Arjuna, lead to me. Those desiring success in their actions worship the gods. Those actions in the world, oh, through action in the world of mortals, their desires are quickly fulfilled. The distinctions of caste, guna, and karma have come from me. I am their cause, but I myself am changeless and beyond all action. Actions do not cling to me because I am not attached to their, to their results. Those who understand this and practice it live in freedom. So since it's important enough to know and understand, I'm going to go back and read that again. Actions do not cling to me because I am not attached to their results. Those who understand this and practice it live in freedom. Knowing this truth Aspirants desiring liberation in ancient times engaged in action. You too can do the same, pursuing an active life in a manner of those ancient sages. What is action and what is inaction? This question has confused the greatest sages. I will give you the secret of action with which you can free yourself from bondage. The true nature of action is difficult to grasp. You must understand what is action and what is inaction and what kind of action should be avoided the wise see that there is action in the midst of inaction and inaction in the midst of action their consciousness is unified and every act is done with complete awareness the awakened sages call a person wise when all his undertakings are free from anxiety about results all his selfish desires have been consumed in the fire of knowledge the wise ever satisfied have abandoned all external supports. Their security is unaffected by the results of their actions, even while acting.
They really do nothing at all, free from expectations and from all sense of possession, with mind and body firmly controlled by the soul. They do not incur sin by the performance of physical action. They live in freedom who have gone beyond the dualities of life. Competing with no one, they are alike in success and failure and content with whatever comes to them. They are free without selfish attachments. Their minds are fixed in knowledge. They perform all work in the spirit of service, and their karma is dissolved. And remember, in, in this sense of like karma yoga, you don't want good karma. This idea we have that you want to like avoid bad karma and get good karma, that's not the goal because that still keeps you trapped in karma. You want to be free of karma. You want to be free of your actions and the results of your actions. And the way Krishna is saying you do that is by not being attached to the results of your actions. You do what needs to be done, but the outcome, you don't worry about that. You give the outcome to God. Right? Let God have the outcome. You just do what needs to be done. And that frees you from the consequences of the, the karma. Right, It frees you from the karma. It frees you from developing these habitual patterns that become a part of our minds that determine our future actions. Those are called samskaras in the technical sense. So you can't talk about karma without samskaras. But either way, if you do your actions just for the sake of the action or for God or for others as selfless service, without any selfish thought of reward or desire for yourself, you are free from karma as you do it, is what I understand him saying. Now, granted, I have a whole history of being wrong about stuff, but that's what I hear him saying. Hopefully that made sense. Picking up, Krishna continues, the process of offering is Brahman. That which is offered is Brahman. Brahman offers the sacrifice in the fire of Brahman. Brahman is attained by those who seek Brahman in every action. Some aspirants offer material sacrifices to the gods, other offer selfless services sacrifice in the fire of Brahman. Some renounce all enjoyment of the senses, sacrificing them in the fire of, self rest of sense restraint. Others partake in sense objects, but offer them in, a, in service through the fires of the senses. Some offer the workings of the senses and the vital forces through the fire of self-control, kindled in the path of knowledge. Some offer wealth. Others offer sense restraint and suffering. Some take vows and offer knowledge and study the, of the scriptures. And some make the offering of meditation. Some offer the forces of vitality, regulating their inhalation and exhalation, and thus gain control over these forces. Others offer the forces of vitality through restraint of their senses. All these understand the meaning of service and will be cleansed of their impurities. I think that was a long way of saying... No matter how you sacrifice to God, the sacrifice is accepted. No matter what the sacrifice is and how you do it, it is accepted. I think that's what all that means. True sustenance is in service, and through it a man or woman reaches the eternal Brahman. But those who do not seek to serve are without a home in this world, Arjuna. How can they be at home in any world? How can they be at home in any world to come? Need a refill. These offerings are born of work, and each guides mankind along a path to Brahman. Understanding this, you will attain liber liberation. The offering of wisdom is better than any material offering, Arjuna, for the goal of all work is spiritual wisdom. Approach those who have realized the purpose of life and question them with reverence and devotion. They will instruct you in this wisdom. Once you attain it, you will never again be deluded. You will see all creatures as the self. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, since I'm doing the capital S self as soul, you will see all creatures in the soul and all in me. Even if you were the most sinful of sinners, Arjuna, you could cross beyond all sin by the raft of spiritual wisdom. As the heat of a fire reduces wood to ashes, the fire of self-knowledge burns to ashes all karma. Nothing in this world purifies like spiritual wisdom. It is the perfection achieved in time through the path of yoga, the path which leads to the soul within. Those who take wisdom as their highest goal, whose, 
whose faith is deep and whose senses are trained, attain wisdom quickly and enter into perfect peace. But the ignorant, indecisive, and lacking in faith waste their lives. They can never be happy in this world or any other. Those established in the self have renounced selfish attachments to their actions and cut through doubts with spiritual wisdom. They act in freedom. Arjuna, cut through this doubt in your own heart with a sword of spiritual wisdom. Arise, take up the path of yoga. Again, the path of union. Union with whatever is, is the source for you. For me, it's union with God. What it may be for you, I don't know, union with consciousness, union with the self, the true self, whatever, because they're all the same thing anyway. Um, so there it is, chapter four. I'm sure that, that cleared everything up like a, like a bowl of mud, but um, don't be selfish. Do your actions for others. Um, give all your actions and all your results to God. Act selflessly. Don't work for so selfish motives. And learn to see everything as sort of one. When you see yourself in others and others in yourself, or yourself in God and God in others and all that stuff, boom, you got it. You're free of karma, right? You're free of acting or creating new karma. And also you start burning up the old karma. And sooner or later, you run out of karma. And you're free. You're free from birth. You're free from death. You live in eternal wherever. I don't know. Anyway. That's chapter four. <laughs> Feel free to ask any questions that I will not be able to answer in the comments and, um, and whatever. I'll see you next time I do one of these. Peace out.